Where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be an earth shattering <laughs> kaboom. This video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Go check them out at www.globalordnance.com. Howdy folks, welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. We have Dustin from Top Shot. Dustin hey, here, hey. gonna be helping us out. We're gonna be doing a sequel to our previous video where we used a can cannon uh, through our ungulate of destitution from our friends at Anderson Manufacturing. We want to make sure, they call it Poverty Pony. I prefer yes. to be classy with an ungulate of destitution um, that we had laying around that we registered as a destructive device. What we've got right here is your 16 inch 308 can cannon that we're going to be using to lob some ordnance through and that I have here in my hands. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a not very scientific comparison, but it's gonna be a comparison to our other one. What we'll do is we'll launch a flashbang through it and see how well that works for delivering it downrange. Afterwards, we'll try a pipe bomb that we've got right here, which uh, we launched before on our other one, and we'll see how well that goes. And then finally, we have a Russian-style fragmentation grenade. Now, what we did is we have a factory M213 grenade fuse, which is the same thing for an M67 fragmentation grenade. The threading on there works good enough. We're gonna drop it down in, yeah, <laughs> works good enough. We're gonna drop it down here and we're gonna see how far we can actually lob it um, using some of the blanks and whatnot. We've, yesterday we to toyed around with it to see how well it would work. It threw it pretty far. Um, and now we're gonna actually move on to the actual ordinance. Yeah, the, the 308's got a little more power, so it's hopeful. Yeah, so we'll see what happens and go from there. We invited Top Shot Dustin to our Never Neverland Explosives Ranch as he has a 30 caliber can cannon, much bigger than the 556 variant that we used before in a previous video. That did not go very far. <laughs> we started out testing some launch loads to see how they performed. Run! <laughs> that would not have been very effective for a fragmentation grenade. We would have been running away like King Arthur from the Killer Rabbit. But it got a bit dark, so we had to secure for the night and save it for the next day. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, we've got Dustin's 308 can cannon here. We're gonna drop in. These are the plugs from the factory that actually go with it. We're gonna see how far these blanks will throw the pipe bomb before we actually throw a live one. We wanna make sure that it gets far enough away where we don't have to do the Monty Python runaway thing. So we'll see what happens. I may have to get a stick and shut it down. If yeah, you don't let's wanna... see. All that air coming out because the seal breached. I yep, we're ready to go. Yeah, this right here, we're again, it's inert. We're just going to launch it to see how far it goes, but the real one will actually fill it up with some explosives, light I it, send it. I think it's supposed to go further. You think so? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay, maybe not. No, I think we're good. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. It's decent. That got pretty decent distance. I saw something come off when it hit. Yeah. Could be one of the end caps. The 308 can cannon managed to lob the pipe bomb about 50 meters or so, give or take. Not as much as we hoped, but well within an acceptable distance. The pipe bomb was weighed down with sand to give a proper simulation of a live round. So we can expect about the same distance when launching it with live explosives. Never been done before. Unfortunately, the can cannon faced a major malfunction as some of the launch loads were jammed into the receiver. Sean had to break out his gunsmithing skills to clear the issue before we continued. Like, somehow the round got backwards in there, like it did some sort of somersault in the magazine. Like, I have never seen a malfunction like that before. Wow, well, new things every day. So we finally got it out, and the round that didn't do a somersault looks pretty sketch. So we'll go ahead and not use this one for the flashbang. But now that we got it figured out, hopefully, inshallah, um, we'll see if we can get that thing heading down range. That'll be fun. All right, so next up is gonna be a ALS-09 reusable flashbang. We're gonna put it in here, the pin. All right, so the goal is whenever it launches out, the bang will, the spoon will come off and the uh, timer will start going on the bang. We'll see what happens. 
All right, so I was a moron and called the fuse a timer a second ago. What we're gonna do is we're gonna launch it out. It's got a one to two second fuse, so hopefully that it will detonate in air. It'll look really cool, and we'll see what happens. So let's do it. Here we go. That's cool. Wow! That went far. Okay. All right. I see and, the spot. Yeah, and that was really loud. Like you could actually hear that w way up there. So that would have been a good aerial bang, actually. And that thing went a lot further than I thought it was going to. So the frag grenade. Yeah, the frag grenade's lighter than that. So I think the frag grenade's going to go even further. Oh, now I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool stuff. So <laughs> let's go hopefully find it. Unfortunately, this one went off just above the field of view of the camera. So I'm sure plenty of conspiracy theorists will claim we faked it. Much like they claimed the moon landing was faked and the moon is a hologram. Whatever. We then had to track down the reusable flashbang as the hulls aren't cheap surprisingly. It did get some decent distance as it weighs less than the pipe bomb. All right, so we launched it about 150 meters or so. If I remember correctly, when we did it with the 5.56 one, only sent this about 75 meters. Right. So this right here got some serious air uh, or hang time. Um, and so you can see that it came down here. It's still hot. These right here are get extremely hot. I want to make sure you're wearing your gloves and you're handling mm -hmm. um, ordnance like that. But it blew up in the air and it had a really good report, actually. It sounded it, it louder. Was neat. Yeah, it sounded louder than um, usual. I wonder, again, if it, since it's in the air, if it gets a better distribution of the I sound so. versus on the ground. Everybody and, hears it further, probably. Yeah, because um, on the ground, I'm sure that it gets broken up. And But anyways, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and move on to the main effort where we'll start lobbing. The, we did the less lethal. Now it's time to move on to the lethal stuff. Oh, boy. Yep, we'll have some fun. <laughs> So now we're ready for the main event. We got Dustin's Can Cannon, uh, the X Products 308 Can Cannon Launcher. We're trying it here with a pipe bomb that uh, Jake made. We got about a 30 to 40 second fuse. Our plan is we're gonna take this little cup right here that's factory, we'll drop it down in here, and then we're gonna drop the pipe bomb on top of it. We'll light the pipe bomb and fire it off. And if there's some sort of issue where the pipe bomb doesn't go flying, if the blank doesn't work or whatever, the plan <laughs> is to, we're gonna give it a shot of trying to get it out of the uh, barrel before I throw it away and then run away very fast. And then, um, yeah, Justin, or D Dustin can learn about how to tell the ATF that you blew up your gun and writing it out of your books okay. as uh, destroyed. But hopefully <laughs> we don't have that happen. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get growing. And after that, we'll try a fragmentation grenade. And now we wait. Well, that's not good. Well, that was disappointing. Um, yeah, so I thought that we had it fully lit whenever we fired it off. And one of the things that whenever you launch an ordinance, you don't really want to be like, hey, where's that going? <laughs> no. um, I wasn't paying any attention and I thought I had it lit. It could have been that it wasn't fully lit. It just right. lit the initial part, it went out. It could have been kinked. Bunch of different things, but whenever you're dealing with improvised ordinance, you really don't want to go out there and do the kicking thing till you let it sit for a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the fragmentation grenade. Oh, yeah. What we've got right here is we have a Russian style body of a frag grenade with an American M213 fuse. And this right here's got um oh it's got i think 60 grams mm -hmm. is what jake said of high explosives in there's gonna be a tnt equivalent now this is a great part this okay. is anytime we do grenades we get the ordnance lab truthers okay the ones that like oh that was cgi'd or whatever <laughs> it was faked and all that stuff because you know buddy is actually a cgi fake anyways ah. and because there's that guy um oh what's his name um edward scissorhands or whatever yeah like, he always fakes grenades really? and it's, oh it's funny that he blatantly <laughs> fakes it with tannerite and it's uh, like millions of followers and no one calls him out for it wow. but whatever on this right here we're actually going to be launching it of course you know no it's really a cgi effect just like buddy see buddy running around but what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and put this cap in here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick the grenade in here make sure that the spoon is on the inside we're yeah. going to pull the pin and then we're going to release the jungle clip slide it down in there and then what will happen is we'll where it fires out is that this hopefully uh, the plan is that the spoon comes flying off and that initiates the three to five second fuse and i'm going to quickly get behind here and not watch it go off i'm going to go back um, there yeah you'll be back over there but we'll see what happens and see how far we can get this grenade to go sounds good all right all right cool wait for them to get back 
Again, I'm going to look again for like the 10th time to make sure there's no obstructions in front of the barrel to, because it would kind of suck if the grenade went boop, boop. All right, we're clear. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha, worked. So our Russian-American hybrid hand grenade didn't get as much range as we hoped, but no matter. It launched without issues and Sean wasn't forced to eat the can cannon due to the grenade getting stuck. So success! We went to go find the blast, and also the pipe bomb, as leaving unexploded ordnance is a major safety issue. Go figure. Dustin found it rather rapidly though, so I did a quick recon of the pipe bomb. Turns out the fuse just got kinked on impact. This prevented it from burning down and setting off the detonator. So here's where our CGI fake grenade landed. Uh, well, that is if you believe, you know, the, the mainstream YouTube that it was actually a real grenade. And so we'll have to check the video to see if it like landed and rolled or whatever. But what's funny is that we actually went out there and found the pipe bomb um, there. And uh, I've, I've <laughs> been vindicated that I, I lighted on fire, but it was broken off right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rearm it. Uh, but what was weird is, again, the grenade only went, uh, I'd say, about 30 to 40 meters or so versus the pipe bomb that went a good 50 meters. And so that's an interesting difference between them. I don't know, that could have been with the angle. I could have fired it a little bit higher up. We can look at that in the video later on. But anyways, let's get back here. We'll get this thing armed and we'll recock and try again with the pipe bomb making that fly. All right, so what we did is Jake went ahead and redid the fuse and where he put the uh, actual detonator down inside the pipe bomb. And so what's going to happen is that the fuses will burn down into there. And then the goal with that is that whenever it lands, that it won't break off like it did last time. So we'll see what happens and <laughs> hopefully it was bang this time. Not sure if that one lit off. This time it was user error instead of system error. Sean torched the end of the fuse but assumed it was lit due to the visible flame. This was simply the fuse wrap burning and not the actual fuse core. The pipe bomb was recovered and prepared to be launched again. Third time's a charm. That one lit for real. That one lit for real. Previously, I was doing the little haji squat like that, but now my back hurts, so I'm laying here like a gun bunny, or I'm sorry, female firearms enthusiast here. So uh, that's why I can lay back and kind of gaze into your eyes oh like boy. that. Oh, <laughs> hey, maybe we'll do great at Gundy's like that. That's true. Um, anyway, so um, our last one went off really great. The, that, was that was the third good. time we launched it. It was enough that it was starting to get frequent flyer miles. For the second one, what happened is that I didn't follow Jake's advice on making sure that I hit it straight on. I was doing the side and it was burning for about 10 seconds. And I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I want to get it away. Yeah, get we it, can try it, it again. 
Um, but this one here worked really well. At least the CGI worked well. You can see some of the fragments in here because it was about 200 grams of explosives. It was a Tannerite equivalent or that's seven ounces. And so you can see these little pieces of the pipe bomb that went off in here and it knocked down a whole bunch of the ground. So I want to make sure that we thank Top Shot Dustin for letting us borrow this right here. Again, this was the 30 odd or 308 version of the Can Can. And we were supposedly doing this as a comparison to the 556, but we're really just out here screwing off and fun. having fun lobbing ordnance through it. But one thing to talk about is that normally we have our ungulate of destitution, which is the Anderson 556 lower that, you know, we're not gonna mm -hmm. call it a poverty pony. It's the ungulate of destitution. And that right there is registered as destructive device. This weapon right here is not registered as one because we're a manufacturer of destructive devices. Therefore, so what we can do is we can manufacture it and use it, we're manufacturing it, but then we're removing it from configuration as a destructive device. So it doesn't need to be any paperwork because that only needs to be filed by the end of the next business day. So you'll be able to take this home without it being a DD. Okay. All right, well, yeah. hey, thanks for watching and Dustin, thanks again for coming out here and we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab. Nice. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.